Welcome to Prejem Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 63 of C-Sharp video series. In this session, we'll discuss about what partial methods are and the rules to follow when creating partial methods. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 61 and 62 of this video series. A partial class or a structure can contain partial methods. Partial methods are created using the partial keyword. Let's understand partial methods with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a very simple console application project. To this project, let's add a class file. Right click on the project name, add, and I want to add a class file. And let's name the class file as partial class file 1.cs. And within this file, I'm going to have a partial class. So let's say public partial class. And let's call our partial class as sample partial class. And this partial class is going to contain a partial method. So I'm going to use this partial keyword. And the written type of the method is going to be void. I'm going to call this sample partial method. And all I'm going to have here is the definition of the method, only the signature. I'm not going to have the implementation. So only the uh, definition of the partial method. And I'm going to have a non-partial method as well. So public void. Let's call this, you know, maybe public method. And all this method does is prints out a message onto the console saying that public method invoked. Okay, and this method also calls the sample partial method. Okay, so a very simple partial class which has the declaration or the definition of the uh, sample partial method and then a public method which prints out this message public method invoked and then calls the sample partial method. Okay, now let's flip to this program.cs file which actually contains the main method for this console application. And what we are going to do here is we are going to create an instance of the sample partial class. So sample partial class, let's call this SPC is equal to new sample partial class. And then this sample partial class is going to invoke the public method. And if you remember, what is the public method doing? It prints out this message public method invoked and it also calls sample partial method. Now you might be wondering, okay, this sample partial method, it only has, you know, the definition of the method, only the signature. It doesn't have implementation. So what's going to happen when this method gets called? Is it doing anything? No, it's not. Let's say, you know, what is actually going to happen? If I compile this, first of all, will this compile? Let's see that. I, I try to build this. Look at that, build succeeded. Okay, that's fine. Let's run this and see what happens when this public method gets invoked. And interestingly, look at that. Look at the output and compare that with the method implementation here. Here, it's calling public method invoked. So it, it's printing out this line, but then it's not calling this method. Okay, so that's an important point to keep in mind as far as partial methods are concerned. Now, if you look at this partial method, it doesn't have an implementation. So since it doesn't have an implementation, what is the compiler going to do? It's going to ignore this definition. Okay, it ignores the signature and it also ignores this call to that partial method. That's why we don't get a compiler error. And at runtime, it ignores both of them and we only get that message on the screen. But whereas, let's do this. Let's add another class file to this console application project. And let's call that partial class file2.cs. OK. And let's name the partial class as the name. So public partial class, sample partial class. So this is the uh, other part of the partial class. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to provide the implementation for the sample partial method in the other physical file. And all I'm doing here is we are printing out a message onto the console, console.writeline, and we will say sample partial method, 
invoked okay so what we have what have we done now we added this physical file i mean partial class file2.cs and then we provided the implementation for the sample partial method so we have the definition here and the implementation here so as far as partial methods are concerned there are two parts to the partial method one is the definition that's the only signature part and the other one is the implementation and if you look at this the impl the definition of the partial class is present in one physical file and the implementation is present in the other physical file of the partial class now let's go ahead and run this program and see what's going to happen now if you look at this um, you know the public method it's going to print this message as expected and it calls the sample partial method we don't have the implementation for this method here but then it's present in the other partial file so it's con it's going to combine that and then it is going to print this message as well so if we run this now we should have both the methods invoked and printed now is it possible to provide the implementation for the partial method in the same physical file where we have the definition absolutely if you want you can do that now if I run this look at that we have the same output so remember that as far as a partial method is concerned it has got two parts one is the definition of the method that's the only signature you know the definition of the method ends with a semicolon it will not contain a body and then the other part is the implementation and then these two parts can be present in the same physical file of the partial class or they could be present in separate physical files so a partial method declaration consists of two parts the definition only the method signature and the implementation these may be in a separate parts of the partial class are in the same part the implementation for a partial method is optional and we have seen that if you remove the implementation what's going to happen if we don't provide the implementation the compiler removes the signature and all the calls to the method we don't get a compiler error the signature of the method and the calls to that respective partial method will be ignored Partial methods are private by default. This is another important point to keep in mind. Partial methods are private by default and it's a compile time error to include any access modifiers including private. Now since these are private by default, can I use the private access modifier on the partial method? No, you can't. If you try to compile this, you will get an error. A partial method cannot have access modifiers, not only access modifiers, it also cannot have virtual abstract override new seal, all these modifiers. Okay, so partial methods are private by default. And it's a compile time error to include declaration and implementation at the same time for a partial method. Let's understand this practically. So can I do this? Okay, I'm saying this is a partial method. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the body for that method. Or oh, let's get rid of this one. Look at this. Here I am saying this is a partial method. And then I'm providing the definition, that's the signature, and the implementation at the same time. If you're doing that, this is not a partial method at all. You have everything present at one place. So if I try to compile this, let's see what happens. It gives a compiler error, no defining declaration found for implementing declaration of partial method. Okay, and it makes sense. There's no declaration for this partial method. You have the implementation, but where is the declaration? So this is not a partial method. It's a non-partial method. You have the definition and the implementation at the same place, and we cannot do that for a partial method. If I remove this partial keyword, and if I try to compile this, then this will work fine because this is not a partial method. But the moment I include that partial keyword, then this method implementation expects a definition for this partial method to be present either in the same physical file or in another physical file. A partial method return type must be void. Including any other return type apart from void is a compile time error. Again, if you look at this, the partial method that we have the return type of that is void. If you try to have any other return type, we will get a compiler error. And it makes sense because remember, the partial method implementations are optional. And being that the case, if they are optional, if these partial methods return values, wherever you call them, you know, let's say for example, there's a partial method. First of all, these are private, which means the partial methods cannot be invoked outside. 
and then they also cannot have return types. If they have return types, you can use variables, retrieve those return values, and then you make decisions in your program flow. And all of a sudden, if there is no implementation for those partial methods, then what your program is supposed to do? That's why you know you, we don't really have to mug these things. If we understand the concepts of these partial methods, you know uh, we can easily remember them. So partial methods are private by default. They cannot have any other return type apart from void. Including any other return type apart from void is a compile time error. So if I try to build that, partial methods must have a void return type. And that makes sense. Signature of the partial method declaration must match with the signature of the implementation. Again, that's straightforward. Now, this is the definition and this is the implementation. Now let's say in my definition um, I have int i. Now this signature is different from the implementation. Okay, so if I try to build this, look at what's going to happen. No defining declaration found for implementing declaration. So this implementation of the partial method does not have you know an equivalent partial method declaration because this method's signature is different from this method's signature. On the other hand, if I put int i here, and if we try to build this, it works fine. Um, yeah, that's because maybe here we need to pass in 0. But then if we try to build this, look at that, it compiles because both the signatures match here. Okay, so keep that in mind. Signature of the partial method declaration must match with the signature of the implementation. A partial method must be declared within a partial class or a partial structure. A non-partial class or a structure cannot include partial methods. Okay, and that's obvious. If it's a partial class, then it can include a partial method. But if it's a non-partial class, then it cannot include a partial method. For example, let's get rid of this partial class there and obviously we need to comment this otherwise we get a compiler error and look at this so if you look at this one this is a non-partial class because we don't have that partial keyword there and then in a non-partial class I'm trying to include a partial method let's see what happens when I try to build this so a partial method must be declared within a partial class or partial structure and that makes sense and the other error is because of this call. So let's comment that. Now if we try to build this, we get only one error. And that is a partial method must be declared within a partial class or a partial structure. A non-partial class cannot have partial methods. A partial method can be implemented only once. Trying to implement a partial method more than once raises a compile time error. And this is, again, very important to keep in mind. So we have two partial classes here. Uh, so let's call this public partial class. That's our sample partial class. And let's un uncomment this. Okay. So this is a partial void sample method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the implementation for this method here. So console.writeline. And let's say sample partial method. maybe invoked. So we have provided the implementation for this partial method within the same physical file. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and move it across to the other physical file. So technically what are we doing? We are implementing this partial method in two places, in this physical file as well as in this physical file. Now let's try to compile this and see what actually happens. Bell solution, a partial method may not have multiple implementing declarations. So we are implementing here once, we are implementing here the second time. So multiple implementing declarations. But then the definition declaration is only one, and the error message makes sense. So keep in mind, a partial method can be implemented only once. Trying to implement a partial method more than once raises a compile time error. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, c -sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.